Hi, I'm Dr. John Neustadt, president and founder of NBI. Recently, like dominoes, one by one in our house, myself, my wife, my kids, we got sick. The cold and the flu came through just like it's affecting millions of people around the country this winter. People have been asking me, reaching out, how am I dealing with it? What am I doing to help my family? So I'm here to share with you my best practices to provide information and resources to help you beat the cold and flu faster and to reduce some of its symptoms using an integrative approach. The first thing to do is to get rid of all dairy and sugar. Dairy is mucus forming and it can provide an environment for bacteria and viruses to be trapped where they can replicate and stick around. So you want to get the dairy out of the diet immediately. Eliminating sugar gives your immune system a fighting chance because sugar decreases the function of the immune system. It can impact how well the immune system fights the virus or the bacteria. So you want to get that out of your diet. I then whip up a, bro a pot of my cold and flu fighting broth that has onion and garlic and cinnamon. I like uh, putting cayenne in it, but it's optional. Uh, that recipe I did a Facebook Live about before, and there's a blog on the website. After this video, I'm going to post a blog with all of these tips on it, with links to that recipe, and with additional help for information, including a handout, so that you can use this information and access it quickly. The third thing uh, that I do and like to do is you've got to decide whether you want to feed a fever or fight, or, or fight a fever. What does that mean? Well, the fever is the body's way of boosting the immune system, helping how well it fights the infection. So while this may vary from person to person, and there are reasons why you perhaps shouldn't induce a fever in some people, for my family and for what I do, if we're getting sick and we don't have a fever, I'll induce one using home hyperthermia. Hyperthermia means high heat. We want to increase the body's core temperature. And there are instructions on how to do that in the blog and also a handout. And what I'll do is I will get into a hot, hot bath, as hot as, as, hot as uh, one of us can stand it. And then that person, uh, after a half hour in the bath, will go into a bed wrapped in multiple blankets in sweats and a hoodie and socks and just cook. Increase that, that core temperature. You want to monitor the temperature, make sure it doesn't get too high. And of course, there are reasons why uh, maybe you shouldn't do that. All of that's in the PDF handout that's linked to uh, in the blog that's going to be in the comments uh, below. But it's really important that if the fever is there, that you recognize that it's helping fight the body, uh, helping fight the infection, it's helping the body. And that the knee-jerk reaction a lot of people have of somebody has a fever, we're going to give ibuprofen or Tylenol to, to bring that down, may actually be working against the body's own system for fighting that infection. So there are reasons to allow the fever to continue, the reasons to induce a fever if there's not one. If it gets too high, you can bring it down with Tylenol or ibuprofen, or you can also put somebody in a tepid bath, which I did with my daughter recently, to just bring that, bring that down. Again, that information is going to be on the handout, as well as recommendations. You uh, consider this informational and educational purposes only. And if you have any questions that you do discuss these, uh, these topics with your healthcare, provi healthcare provider. Uh, sue the sore throat. The sore throat can be, uh, you know, a real problem and it can be incredibly painful. Yes, there's Sepacol or lozenges with anesthetic in it. That will work. What I like to do, though, is uh, ice chips. Have uh, the kid or one of us suck on ice chips. Naturally decrease the inflammation, soothe the sore throat. Or even better, get a bag of frozen organic cherries. Pop some of those, uh, put some of those in a bowl put them in the microwave for about 30 seconds. So they're still cold inside. They've warmed up a little bit, but still frozen on the inside. My daughter, our daughter loves to suck on those. Not only will it soothe that sore throat, it also provides incredibly healthy antioxidants and other, other nutrients. So that's a great strategy. Ease an earache. 
To fight an earache, they're great drops with garlic and mullein. Both botanicals, both used for centuries, uh, very safe. The only reason people shouldn't use eardrops, uh, whether it's uh, using over-the-counter dietary supplements or even medications, is if they have a perforated eardrum, a hole in their eardrum. But if you don't, typically they're considered safe. Discuss this, of course, with your healthcare provider. But I'll take garlic mullein drops. They're antimicrobial, meaning it'll kill the virus and, and the uh, uh, bacteria if they're there. In, uh, in the ear, and they're soothing as well. Very effective, I just use as directed on, on the eardrops, available as a dietary supplement over the counter, garlic mullein eardrops. Uh, clear congestion, uh, help fight that. Peppermint drops are great. We use little beadlets, uh, doTERRA beadlets, not affiliated with any of these companies, but that's what we use, there are a lot of them out there. Pop some of those, that peppermint essential oils can help clear up the uh, sinus congestion. Great dietary supplements out there, clinical trials on them, elderberry. Elderberry is one, there's information about that in the blog, shown to reduce the duration of the flu uh, in clinical trials. You gotta make sure you get the right dose. Again, that's in the blog. And finally, should you take an antibiotic? There's a big problem and concern in the medical community with antibiotics being overused and being used for indications that they're not intended to be used for. And that causes antibiotic resistant bacteria to increase and creates challenges when we're actually trying to use the antibiotics appropriately. The fact is most infections initially are not caused by bacteria, they're caused by viruses. And so antibiotics won't be effective at all. Antibiotics kill bacteria, they don't, they don't kill viruses. And so the, the general approach in medicine and what I do with my family is initially we treat it like a viral infection. Don't prescribe antibiotics. If they are get better, uh, let's say after a few days, they're getting better and then they get worse again. Well, typically that's a secondary bacterial infection setting in and then I'll consider antibiotics and you can consider discussing that with your healthcare provider. Or if they've, got, they've been sick for you know, five days and they're still not better, then it's likely a bacterial in, infection as well. Now, if there's a throat infection, a sore throat, that can always be cultured and see if it's strep, if that's a bacteria. But in general, these, these infections are gonna be first viral infections. I hope this information helps. This is what I do for my family. This is what I've taught thousands and thousands of people to do in approaching how they think about the cold and flu and how they can reduce the symptoms and help themselves and their loved ones get better faster. Look for that uh, blog link below. I'm gonna post it right after the end of this video and head on over to NBI Health for more information. Be healthy this winter, wash your hands, get good sleep, and take care of the most precious thing you have, and that's your health. Bye-bye.